that he helped build and the platform that pretty much all of our featured poets tonight um, have stood upon, have lived through and have represented in all their absolute poetic glory. Um, so tonight we're gonna be featuring amazing women and we also are opening up the microphone to you amazing people that are willing to tell a story about yourself uh, or about a woman that has moved you. And we definitely wanna celebrate the extraordinary heroes, but the, the unknowns, the, 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 um, the quiet heroes, the everyday heroes that absolutely make this world go round. Um, I myself started performing at the New York and Poets Cafe on an open mic. I still host the open mics on Thursday night. Um, we did an open mic last night and, and dedicated it to Miguel Algarin. Um, but I started my career absolutely on an open mic. That's why I believe in them. I love hosting them. And that's why a portion of this evening is gonna be absolute open mic performances. So we don't know uh, what we're gonna hear. So it's gonna be absolutely special, living in the moment and celebrating our truth. So I guess I'll get into uh, a first piece just to open it up before I introduce Spirit. Um, this is called For Which It Stands. Um, being La Bruja uh, means the witch in Spanish. And um, I have been asked so many times why I chose to call myself La Bruja way before the whole La Bruja movement. There are a lot of Brujas now and there are a lot of women claiming their inner divinity and, you know, when I chose that name, it was a political choice. It was a feminist choice. And what I realized now was that I was trying to decolonize people's minds when they thought about women and they thought about curanderas, healers, and religion. But anyway, this piece is for which it stands. It's even a music video that I made years ago, and I'm just going to recite it for you. A little girl with big dreams down these streets so mean. She believed that her destiny meant she'd succeed. And even though the odds seemed they were stacked up against her, few people could see what she had in her center. Her mental capacity was exposed to tragedy, surviving the insanity as strong as she had to be. Her crew and family believed in her too. Underground is where she grew, boogie down, sound view, where teachers wouldn't recognize her as a real writer. But deep down inside her, a magical fire burned and devoured the negative around her. The voice from inside her was louder than the doubters, so she remained empowered, blossomed like a flower, stood tall as a tower amongst phonies and cowards that all would give her pounds at the witching hour cause she wouldn't give up and now she couldn't be prouder. They wanted the fame when she earned the name. They wanted the bling, she just wanted to sing. They wanted things selling out for their dreams. She wanted peace and love for human beings. They wanted something they could pump in the truck. She wanted something that was honest from the gut. And they wanted something that the kids would repeat. And she wanted something to instill some belief. Said she couldn't cut it, said that she was too deep. And all that consciousness would put people to sleep. Some dreams were shot down as they tried to deceive her. She had plans for big things, but they wouldn't believe her. They told her that they doubted if she would ever achieve it. Now those very same people couldn't be any sweeter. It wasn't easy either, but if you're a true believer, you could be or inspire a future world leader. I wrote my name on an open mic list to spit. It was a lunar eclipse. It was 1996, April 3rd. My spoken word the first time was heard and I emerged as a New Yorican poet. I didn't even have a flow yet. Bobito hosted. The seed was planted since then. I just had to grow it from the time I was five when I learned to recite from my mom who herself couldn't read or even write. She was my beacon of light. She changed the course of my life. She saw my mom become a wife on Halloween night. So no, I don't kill chickens or do voodoo pins sticking and my mission isn't wicked. Superstition or wiccan. No Spanish inquisitions, no spooky premonitions, no treating, no tricking. It's just oral tradition. I only spell with words, verbal incantation. So after this, don't ask again what the name meant. La Bruja. So 
there it is for which it stands. <laughs> and when I refer to Mama, I am referring to my great grandmother on my maternal line who did not know how to read or write, but I had the absolute blessing of being with my great grandmother while my grandmother took care of the both of us at the same time. And her name was Adelaida Montalvo Cataquet from Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. So stories of women who move us. Before we get into our first feature of this evening, I would like to introduce the Women's Activism New York Project Coordinator, Spirit Tofik. Thank you so much. Absolutely beautiful. I'm so inspired and moved already. Thank you very much. Beautiful, beautiful opening. Um, it's such a pleasure to be with you all in community tonight. We're thrilled to be partnering with the New Eurekan Poets Cafe for this evening's event to celebrate the beauty and richness of the diversity of the phenomenal women that light up our hearts, that brighten our spirits and make our world a better place. I'd also like to actually um, like to thank Dan Galan, uh, Executive Director of the New Eurekan Poets Cafe for being so open and enthusiastic and embracing this idea to work together to bring tonight's event to fruition. And I'd like to also give a shout out to the Women's Activism NYC team, Latanya Jones, Raul Flores, Madeline Bank, um, who have just waved, um, and many others that are not necessarily here with us tonight, but who have worked hard to bring tonight together. Um, La Bruja, your energy is infectious. It's so spectacular. And thank you for your generosity to host tonight. And all of the fabulous artists who I'm going to allow La Bruja to graciously introduce, um, we're really thankful to you and everyone who signed up on the open mic. We're really excited to hear your words. Some background, Women's Activism NYC is a crowdsourced digital archive uh, sponsored and spearheaded by the Department of Records and Information Services, the Municipal Archives. And the purpose is to celebrate the women's suffrage centennial. So it's been an initiative over the past five years to celebrate the women's suffrage centennial in various ways. And one of the major components of the project is to create the archive, a digital archive, to collect 20,000 stories of women change makers, activists, and everyday women by the close of 2020. So the tapestry is a beautiful archive representing stories of women, our mothers, our grandmothers, sisters, aunts, neighbors, nurses, and a plethora of other women whose stories need to be told. Um, the, op the archive is an opportunity to center women whose stories have been marginalized, whose stories are not found in textbooks, yet have moved the earth and who have moved our hearts in countless ways. And we have the sacred role and responsibility of stewarding their stories in the archive where they will live in perpetuity to inspire the next generation and the next generation. So we're literally writing history and expanding the narrative to represent the mosaic of the diverse beauty and richness of the humanity that we represent in the city, nation, and globe. So speaking of archive, I want to cordially invite you to following this event to honor a woman in that way and submit her story to the archive. One of my colleagues will type the archive address in the chat. So it's, it's pretty simple, womensactivism.nyc. And throughout the event, we want you to, we encourage you to chime in with any questions or comments that you have, whether it's about the archive or a question or comment for an artist. We really encourage that interaction and one of the women's activism NYC team members will be glad to assist. We also have a gift of a story campaign going on right now, which is really cool. You can write a woman into her story on the archive, and then we present you with a certificate that you can gift her with and let her know that you've honored her legacy in this way. So once again, we encourage you to put your questions and comments in the chat and we'll respond in real time. So to kick off kind of the spirit of activism, I just wanted to express some thoughts that I have because with this project, the word activism seems to have a certain connotation and we wanna to try to 
bring that connotation and expand that connotation. Stories of women who move us, activism, a word that brings about a certain connotation. We're expanding the notion of activism, a branded image seared in our minds when the word is spoken, activism. Women's activism has a new spark, a new life. Activism, women's activism is making a difference in someone's life. It's about change, it's about gratitude, it's about courage. It's helping our elders with their groceries or nurturing a child struggling in math. It's radiating warmth and compassion when another is hurting. It's navigating a sea of sharp, rocky waters with gusting winds. It's facing a society that often teases and taunts us that we don't fit the mold, that we're too young or too old, that we're not worthy, that we're not worth it, that sometimes we're just worth less. It's tucked into moments of despair and showers others on our brightest days. It's braiding our little sister's hair, weaving in the legacy of our mothers and our mother's mother and looking to the future to care for the earth for the next generation. As women, we're intricately woven into this life tapestry, bound together by our past, by our scars, our triumphs and victories. It's the streak of resistance in our smile, our gl the glimmer of our cheekbones when our heads are held high, our vivacious hearts, the wind at our feet and the power of our words. The vivid colors, textures, designs of activism are displayed on the surface of our protest signs marching in the streets, to the equation bathed chalkboards in our classrooms, to the food pantry, to the youth ministry, to our very own living rooms. Activism is being present, it's showing up, it's holding space, it's speaking up and speaking out, it's caring for loved ones, it's being honest, being vulnerable, it's waking up to face another day. Activism is compassion, resistance, power, force, energy, light, our laughter, tears, contribution, impact, our stories. It's you, it's me. Women's activism is life. Thank you so much. I'm going to hand it back to you, La Bruja. Ooh, yes, spirit. That was so beautiful. Thank you. I feel your emotion and your passion about what it is that you are doing. And I'm so grateful for you. And, and that's just great. That was just so great. And that's, that's the feeling. That's the mission. That's the movement. That's why we're here holding space for the unsung sheroes of our lives. Um, it makes me misty. <laughs> I can't help it. I, you know, we live in a patriarchal society and I hope to make it a matriarchal society. And our first poetic feature is not only a woman that has done this, has been doing the work as an activist. She's also my friend since the very beginning um, and a comrade in the liberation of Puerto Rican political prisoners, as well as a professor, as well as a tremendous poet. Uh, ladies and gentlemen from the Boogie Down Bronx by way of Puerto Rico, I present to you Mariposa. Thank you so much, Carida. Thank you for that beautiful introduction um, and all the love. I feel it. Uh, and this is a special um, space that you have created uh, that, that we need so much. So, so thank, thank you so, so much um, to you, to the New York and also um, to, to the curators of this project, which I just learned about, uh, which I, I, I look forward to sharing with my students uh, when we have activism at NYC. The, your microphone is, uh, if there may be a switch or something, it's going, uh, does everybody else hear it like that? Yeah, Mariposa, there seems to be like a little- Leave and come back, I'm sorry. sorry. That's, that's the, the only, only way to fix it. fix it. Okay, that happens too, because the frequency is so strong. Her energy is so strong that it is affecting the electronics. That's what I'm talking about. It is no joke. I, 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 this has happened to me too. That's why I totally understand. I don't even question it. <laughs> you gotta turn it off, turn it on. You gotta walk out of the room. I have been in on set 
with cameras and the camera would not press record for nothing. I had to leave. They had to press record. I had to walk into the scene in order to record it because, you know, electronics pick up our energy. We are frequency. We are vibration. You know, we are those things. We are magic. And so it's just how it is. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I hope that, so I think she didn't just, she left the, the room and she's going to log back in. So if you guys have any questions, I want you to definitely write those inside of the chat. I have so far listed in my open mic list, Elise, Rosalind, and Leona. If you're interested in being put onto the open mic list, you only have five minutes to perform whatever it is you're going to perform. It has to be a personal story or about a woman. Uh, so just keep that in mind and chat with me in the chat. Let me know. And let's see, Mariposa testing one, two. I like my mic. <laughs> yeah, I like my mic. Sounds nice, Mike. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, take it away, Mariposa. <laughs> So I was saying thank you to the New York and, um, and to you, Gadi, for having this space and creating this space. And so all the curators of this project, um, um, Activism NYC and paying tribute to women, I am paying tribute to um, Naomi Long Majet, who we just lost. And she was a poet who lived to the beautiful age of 97. She was born in 1923 and she was actually mentored by Langston Hughes. And she is known to the poets of Detroit as their godmother, the godmother of the poets um, and poet laureate of the city of Detroit. And she just passed away in November. And I just shared in the chat, the New York Times just um, published um, an obituary to her today. She um, meant so much and did so much for the poets, um, for, for a lot of poets. And so um, I wrote a dedication and then I'm going to recite a poem by Naomi Long Majet. And this is my dedication to her. I never got to meet her, but I fell in love with the poem that, I, that um, Midway, which I'll, I'll recite in a, in a moment. Um, it, her poetry just moved me so much. I feel like I did know her. She wrote a lot about um, civil rights, justice, and spirituality. And, um, and this is my dedication to her. For Naomi Long Majet, to the poet and teacher who grew from a young poet Langston took under his wing, the teacher who published her students' poems, typing them on a typewriter and never stopped, who started her own press and pressed on opening a space for their voices and for their own blooming. Longevity inspires the imagination and dreaming to hope to pass on, to endure. And this is Midway by Naomi Long Majet. I've come this far to freedom and I won't turn back. I'm climbing to the highway from my old dirt track. I'm coming and I'm going and I'm stretching and I'm growing and I'll reap what I've been sowing or my skin's not black. I've prayed and slaved and waited and I've sung my song. You've bled me and you've starved me, but I've still grown strong. You've lashed me and you've treated me and you've everything but freed me. But in time, you'll know you need me and it won't be long. I've seen the daylight breaking high above the bow. I've found my destination and I've made my vow. So whether you abhor me or deride me or ignore me, mighty mountains loom before me and I won't stop now. Midway by Naomi Long Majet. <laughs> I just feel chills. I, I committed that poem to memory a long time ago. It just became a part of my soul. And um, you should look her up, definitely look her up. She, she uh, was amazingly prolific. Um, just look for her books. Um, she was amazing. If we should all live to be that long and to, be, and to continue to, to, to be 97 and still sharing and, and reading poetry and inspiring people, she, she was amazing. Um, 
I, as, as a teacher, I, I, I want to be like that when I grow up. I, I want to be like, like Naomi Long with it. Um, I also want to just give a shout out to, um, to the memory and legacy of Miriam Jimenez Roman, um, who there's a poem in my heart for you, Miriam. It just hasn't been born yet. We also lost her in August. Um, she was amazing and I definitely would love for her to be a part of that archive and to contribute in some way to that. So much love to you, Miriam. And this is from my abuelita. And for anyone that's missing someone, um, especially at this time of year who is, is not here at this time, the holidays um, brings up a particular nostalgia and that nostalgia is is intensified with everything that's that's going on with this pandemic, where, where we're just apart, yet together, yet it's a strange time. So this is uh, La Navidad con mi abuela. Mi abuelita preciosa gave us the same gift every year with laughter, tears, joy, and pain. The gift of love that she gave from her soul, the gift of love that she made with her arthritic hands, the hands of a garment worker who would not stop giving the love that is still living even though she is gone. Remembering Huela and the best pasteles in the Bronx, I remember the ritual that lasted weeks that began with a trip to Simpson Street to buy Las Verduras. I wish I could watch her hands again, grind the altia, platano verde, y el guineo también. I wish I could sit in her kitchen again, smell the aroma of sofrito, listen to the alguinaldos de ramito, and hear, my, and hear her sing-song voice scold me as I'd sneak pieces of carne y aceituna into my mouth. I wish I could hand her a rollo de papel and watch mommy and titi fold and tie and stack the precious gifts that mi abuelita. I wish I could remember all the faces Remember all the names of all the people who came on Noche Buena. I wish I could be a little girl again. I wish I could say la bendición just one more time to feel abuela's cheek next to mine, to relive la Navidad con mi abuela. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. Oh, beautiful. Oh my goodness. I miss my abuelita too. And uh, right, our, our grandmothers were like culinary goddesses of Puerto Rican cuisine. <laughs> yes. No, my, my abuelita passed over three years ago. And I think the hardest I cried for her was in her kitchen. You know, that's when it really hit me, you know, that kitchen where it all took place, all the meals, all the love, all of that. So thank you, Mari. I love you. Thank you for sharing. I love you too. And may Naomi Long, uh, is it Na what was the last name? Magit, Magit, Naomi Long Magit. May she live forever. And now in this archive, she does. So that's what this archive is all about so that the future generations can look back at this time, what was happening during 2020, this historic year and, uh, you know, so many beginnings and so many endings. And, uh, you know, some people think it's a horror show, it's a horror movie, <laughs> but we are making it, you know, something beautiful still, despite uh, all, all of the pain, the loss and the sadness that we're dealing with in the unknowns. Um, so I would like to introduce, if possible, open up the mic um, if Rosalind is ready to perform, let me know in the chat. If you have a poem that you would like to recite, please let me know in the chat. Uh, we do want to hear from you. Um, Rosalind, let me know that, that uh, you're here and that you're ready to read a first poem. I have Elise on, on the open mic list, and I also have Ray Jane on the open mic list. Let me see if Rosalind stayed on. Hi. So let me just say before Rosalind recites her poetry, I met Rosalind in Hunts Point at the Boogie Down Grind Cafe doing open mics. Um, and now 
that was before the pandemic. Then the pandemic began and we started doing the open mics on the New York and Post Cafe. And Rosalind and I have seen Rosalind just grow and grow into this tremendous poetess that has written poetry that I wish I had written. That's how great it is. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Rosalind Diaz. Thank you so much, Luha. Um, so I'm gonna jump right in. Uh, this one is called Vanity and Rheumatology. It'll make sense, hopefully, <laughs> once I read the poem. Tenacity fueled that woman determined to go above and beyond in all that she does turns everything she touches into gold that woman caretaker since the age of nine parenting parents and still maintaining her shine that woman overachieving in college permanent placed on the dean's list accolades galore nothing more she could ask for she's a don't leave the stage your name is coming up again kind of woman a don't leave the house unless you're looking great kind of woman. Spent most of her childhood in hospitals, misdiagnosed many times, that woman. Stress always her best friend. Many couldn't comprehend how she soared like a phoenix each time a little stronger. Took on more than she could bear to keep people smiling just a little longer. Vanity kept her in denial for more than just a little while. She wasn't a quitter, that wasn't her style. The weight of the world finally manifested into an autoimmune disease. The news wasn't digested with ease, the irony. While she was busy fighting for the world, her body was fighting itself. How could she be her own enemy? Joints swollen, her body in constant aches, but she pushed through because her reputation was at stake. Rheumatologists told her to slow down before it's too late. And she responded that she doesn't have time because she had things to do and dreams to fulfill and her well-being would never depend on a pill and her aches and pains just didn't fit into the busy schedule. Oh, that woman, such a rebel. Little did she know she was one flare up away from a reality check, having to face the fact that her body and her soul needed some rest. That woman, she begrudgingly accepted that she had to do less, that in spite of her achy muscles, her beauty was timeless. She learned to dispose of her deadly deadlines and overwhelming to-do lists, to in indulge in spa days, exercise, and loving herself to take care of her health, that her well-being was the real wealth, couldn't fight for justice if she couldn't balance the scales, couldn't pour from an empty cup. She had to woman up. Setting boundaries and putting herself first doesn't mean she failed. In spite of her struggles, she managed to prevail, that woman. So when she's a little crazy, a little vain, perhaps a little hard to tame, know that she has a laundry list of shit she overcame. I know her story all too well because I am that woman. End poem. Woo! Yes, Rosalind Diaz. That was empowering. I got chills and everything. Thank you. What a woman you are. Thanks so much, Bruna. I appreciate the invite. I appreciate the platform always and you know when i have it and i i will bring you back again that's uh that's what i love to do i just i want you to shine and everyone to hear that and now it is archived for all time so before we go to our second featured poet we're going to show you some slides of stories of women in the archive of everyday extraordinary women and some quotes of the unsung sheroes and some famous sheroes too. Let's take a look. Audrey Lord, legendary. And 
there's Lola Marie uh, singing the praises of her mom, Stephanie Belizaire. Yeah, sometimes, right, they're not superheroes, but they're superheroes to us. And I'm sure that you out there watching and listening are a superhero to somebody. And, uh, and it's important to just know that and sit with that, you know, all that you have survived and overcome and thrived despite of. It's just amazing that you're here. So thank you for that. Now, our second featured poet is not only an attorney and an activist, but a poet and a performer. I had the wonderful opportunity of introducing her recently on um, uh, WNYC's Digital Verse, and, uh, and she blew us away there. Ladies and gentlemen, Susan Baraka. Hi, guys. Uh, so I'm going to actually do two pieces, if that's OK. Um, all this talk about moms makes me think about my mother, and she's my hero. So I'm going to start by talking a little bit about her. Nanan Hanguk Saram. My Korean language teacher laughs at me. Oh no, you are Miguk Saram. I am Hanguk Saram too. But this is also always a statement met with disbelief as if black faces all look alike and like nothing familial, only familiar with drugs, only synonymous with crime. And though I can't get past the first three minutes of menace to society, perpetuating stigmas cause my people not to desire me. See, I'm the black girl in class. Even though the other pupils are as Korean as my eyes, they do not see me as if black face is the ultimate disguise. Why? are you here? What are you? And every time I hear it, I want to crawl into a hole and sit fetal style in my mother's womb. She is why I'm here, and yet I don't quite fit inside of her. I can't quite get comfortable in her silhouette. She protects her stories by putting up language barriers and tripwire. Understanding stumbles over her words, so she tells lies with her shoes. She's not that tall. She's taller. Sujina, she calls me. Oh ma, I call her. See, I store kimchi in my heart, pumps red pepper blood, spicy. My heart burns Korea and fried chicken burns my mouth. I learned that from my black grandmother who grew up down south, but on Fifth Ave and 30th Street, yeah. Korean fried chicken and beer, $18, all you can eat. But this is more than a bulgogi and collard greens type thing. Yes, my mother does do nails for a living. But beyond that customer service smile, yo, my mother has been through things. A man who was supposed to be the answer to her dreams. A man who was supposed to change her life forever and he did. Her world was new with him, unexplored, though it had already been discovered and she was an outsider. She had ventured for him to come home and it was no home at all. His frustration tore into her like teeth into the flesh of Newark. That's where we lived, Newark, where they threw rocks at her children for being different, where love spilled out of his pores for the first time and landed black on her skin, blue on her heart. This was not come true. This was reality, devastation, like leaving your friends, your family, your country for a man who has nothing except your dreams remains on the dinner plate he just left on the table for you to collect. Yes, my mother does do nails for a living, but she also owns that nail salon, owns two houses and raised two black Korean girls on her own type means. So when they ask me, why are you here? What are you? I answer, why, what are you? So that was my piece for my mom. Uh, <laughs> uh, and this next piece I actually wrote today, so you're gonna have to forgive me for reading. I hate to do that, but um, <laughs> I just needed to That's get- powerful. No, on the open mic, we, we, we <laughs> announced a new poem by saying, new shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. 
I owe too many poems to too many women. Undefinable heroes with some with names that'll never touch my lips. Human beings who will never be acknowledged for being more than the vague, fungible assignments we give. Mother, wife, woman. This is for you, Emily Shack who migrated from Mariana, Florida to Newark, New Jersey to raise two black men on her own. You, Ho Young Kim, who emigrated from South Korea to the United States of America with a black man family disowned. You, Raquel Baraka, who migrated from Santo Domingo DR to Prison City, New Jersey for a man she loved and a ready-made family. You, the Honorable Judge Karimu Hill Harvey, who was told by her high school counselor that she wasn't college material, so she went on to college and then to law school and then became a lawyer, a judge, and a college professor. So maybe it's because they wear their struggle beneath onyx and alabaster services where black in any accent don't crack that they be fucking beautiful and I be they and they be the type to stitch dreams into my eyelids, stitch my eyelids to the air, make come true. So I write them into my verses and I fight for them with everything I do because being a woman is hard and being a woman of color is harder. For starters, Breonna Taylor's walls got more justice than she did. And what is a wall? A structure that leaves us enclosed or divided. And, and isn't that the mission? To enclose and divide? Like one woman in her home plus one bullet from her gun somehow equals 22 bullets shot by the biggest gang in Louisville, Kentucky, led by Uncle Tom Daniel Cameron. But I see you, Brianna, and I'm sorry they couldn't. The white erasure of black faces and black bodies and black voices and black stories will not succeed from Tamika Palmer to, to Tamika Mallory. We fight for us and we shall be freed. Black women and women of color, we come from a breed forged by rape and mutilation, racism and deprivation, torture and violence, and yet here we are. Kamala Harris 2020 vibes breaking our silence. Some of y'all talking about hashtag protect black women, like y'all ain't been the ones hashtag hurting black women, hashtag attacking black women, hashtag abusing black women, hashtag using black women, hashtag dehumanizing black women, hashtag belittling black women. We can't be defined by colors or shapes. There be no boxes could contain the roundness of this spirit and there be spirit under this petite mound of flesh. And you can't menagerie we into glass spaces. We be more than this figurine. We are rainbow women who tattoo wings to our ankles, who sprinkle glitter and hot sauce on our tongues. And they try to tame us, break, bend, and reshape us. We are women who jump into piles of autumn leaves with matches on our feet. We light fires. And sometimes we bathe in them, kindle them with the liquor on our breath and the gasoline in our gut. We are playing with the fire. We be touched by hope and this burn doesn't leave a scar. We are the beautiful struggle your mothers have already overcome. Rainbow women been protecting y'all. Time to protect rainbow women. Ooh! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Man, I have chills all over. And you wrote that today. That is amazing susan baraka thank you so much for that oh my goodness both of those poems were absolutely awe-inspiring and just oh my goodness what a gift you are and thank you thank you so much for sharing those those words that sounded like a, a poem, an old poem, deep 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 that you were able to purge i like to say the oldest poem still unknown is the one that is written within your bones. So you better make sure all of you in the closet poets or otherwise, write it down, get it outside of yourself. And now you have a place to recite them and archive them if you so desire by visiting womensactivism.nyc slash share. 
and it will be for all time. <sighs> I'm so inspired by all of you. Okay, so now we're gonna open the mic up again. And this poetess is just the sweetest soul, um, brightens my days on mic and off. Ladies and gentlemen, Elise Versella. Hi guys. Hi. Oh man, thank you so much for having me here tonight. Ah, oh, you guys are brilliant. Um, all right, in the nature of women um, and all of the women in my family, I had written this poem and I'm going to share it with you guys tonight. This is called Philomena, Mildred, Angelina, Alice, Michelle. This is what the women do prepare the room, sweep the step right to left, keep away the dead, wash the linens in the tub and hang them on the line, bring together with darning eye crocheted threads, knead the bread, knuckle to yeast and yeast to rise like the blood in our cheeks, the fire in our breasts, the conflagration in the stomach, we prepare the womb. We alone bury our dead children, keep our husband's secret hold their violence, become bronze statues, monolithic over stovetops. One day you will leave the stove on, become a shade in your own house where you keep the blinds drawn. You will not cry when the husband dies, you will wail. A strangled bird through the coal mine and swallow the ash, you will not cry again. You will reflect on memory until the memory is shinier than how the rest of us lived it. You will mourn the present, we women ache somewhere deep, tormented wraiths holding the walls of the house up, tending to the living room of dying men, but we will love again, children with shared cheeks and Michelin thighs. We will dance again, like seraphim with weary wings, singing hymns above the fireplace. Thank you, guys. Woo! Elise Versella. Thank you, thank you, that's right speaking on it, those powerful women that hold it all up. Thank you for sharing, Elise. Put your information in the chat for everybody. And we're gonna go now to our next featured poet. Now this poetess I'm connected to so many years back at the New York and Poets Cafe and haven't seen her in a while. Why? Because now she's a proud mom and a wife, but she was on HBO Death Poetry Jam and she was on the New York and Poets Cafe Slam Team in 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Tahani Salah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. 2007, I'm a little, uh, you know, I age myself. It's okay. I wish, but uh, yeah. So I mean, this is a really great evening. I'm I'm just soaking it all in. I'm so proud. I have my daughter here, and hopefully she's, you know, we trying to keep it all in, um, you know, history of of uh, keeping the lineage going. Hopefully, so uh, I'm gonna read this poem, and uh, this poem is very special to me because I actually had the opportunity of working with some refugee mothers uh, a very long time ago. And um, in, in, the, in the process of, of interviewing them, uh, they kept asking me um, how I was doing. And it was really interesting because these were women who were refugees and um, specifically um, mothers who had lost their children during the occupation. And this is women from Iraq, Palestine, and uh, uh, I forget where else, but uh, they were specific to, to the Middle East. So I, um, I wrote this poem in reflection to them keep, you know, the conversation kept, you know, coming back to me. And it just stood so poignant that a mother will always be a mother no matter what. And um, yeah, so. Her almost face. Left in the unsettled dust of someone else's revolution, we ask if she has a message to carry back to a place of fallen stars, a place no history could cover the rippings of, to carry this history that no metaphor could cover, 
a place of forgotten beginnings where we rest our heads. Her voice shatters a thousand millenniums, the pulling of a melodic masterpiece. I want to curl up inside of her voice and sleep for hours. She says, pray for us. Like we pray for you, the sun is now setting in the corners of her eyes and I can't bear to turn from her. She says we bleed like them. Our children get hungry like theirs. The Guggenheim of her lips stretch out the words go in peace. I can only fit them in the remembrance of my genes, the burial my ancestors never had. Can you imagine the displacement of a mother's womb? The burial of the ancestors never had. Scaffolding being built over the burned bodies of babies. You promise that if tomorrow never comes, you'll be happier. That if God never let the sun set in your eyes again, you'd be grateful. She asked me, she told me, my fear does not belong here. Are you afraid of what you say on stage? I tell her my fear will not bring the breath back into the body of your son. Your fear will not bring the chemical warfare out of your daughter's bloodstream. So how do you tell a childless mother that her womb carries vacant for the ideals of someone else's bedtime dreams? We sometimes forget the sentiment when we hide words. When listening, you can hear the empty water bottles falling in distance like those burned bodies of babies falling in the distance. She stands there, tearful, triumphant, and troubling, watching the words of her lineage hang out on a line of a window she no longer owns and all I can do was take my thumb, press it into the palm of her hand and pray she could hear her heart beat to mother tongue. I tell her to scream, chant, shout. I tell her that if she lines the bellies with words for blades, she'd be waiting for those suns to set. I remind her to scream and to chant and to shout, not to forget what war looks like. That, that war bleeds here in these streets, that the people united shall never be defeated. Si se puede, speak for the unspoken and live for the lives that have been ripped from us. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna read one more poem. Uh, I just like, I, I felt as if, you know, that that was, you know, that's what spoke to me today. And um, this last poem, you know, it just, uh, it, it really just uh, sets the tone for what I, how I feel when, when someone asked me to come to an event like this today. Um, just wanna open it up. Sorry. So uh, I've been reading this poem quite a lot and it's about my mom. And it's about, you know, the struggle of what it's like to be a woman of, um, you know, of displacement. So, 1967 Palestine, sat a girl in a hollow rain out cave watching her and God's tears fall in sequence to the injustice of a land and a people. These tears flooded the history of a heart never to forget what war and innocence looks like my mother and all her years of living has never turned her back on what freedom looks like. To the politicians that hunger after an Israeli Zionist love affair who say Palestinians don't know hardship. That her history was never written, that the children she'd come to bear would never have a story to tell. Well, tell them. Tell them I cashed the first payment on my grave the day I was born. Don't tell me we don't know hardship. Tell them they stood to tell the stories of children not long enough to rot their teeth, but long enough for the world to see their rotting bodies. Tell them we spoke for those souls running through the fields of heaven, grasping at the fingertips of God, sermon in the last of their laughter. Tell them we were the people that knew beauty at the bottom of our feet for the journey we had to walk. That God tilts little in the sky to let us know he hasn't turned his back on us. That the battle between heart and fiction is a mortal's love for every child whose mother dies an unwarranted death the gift of goodbye, the burden born to bear, tell them. I come from hurricane crashing walls, wisdom given in chaos a confusion like daydream, like daybreak, like infinite rod spines of faith leaving us lifted on a land that may or may not get this, that God is the only businessman that's kept his word and I'm not willing to walk out the door without a deal. 
Tell them I used to hold tsunamis under eyelids. Come hero time, now I hold explosives under my tongue with worship and wisdom, gratitude and godly. I hope you stumble upon my letter soon where there is more than a message of existence. Tell them there are little girls in caves sharing tears with God knowing freedom will come someday. And my, my little Mimi is giving her testament. <laughs> She's gonna, she's learning because she's in, she's watching you do it and don't be surprised. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Thank you so much, everyone. Oh, thank you, Tahani. So great to see you. 2007 New York and Poets Cafe <laughs> Slam team. Man, you could still slam today, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I was never really good at slams. I was more, you know, <laughs> I don't know what I am, but. You, there's a special, a special, a special type of writing it takes to be able to slam and Tahani Salah, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so let's see a couple more slides from that archive showing uh, some quotes from those unsung shiros. Ketriana, Charles Yates speaks about Ketriana, the caring spirit that says, I salute and encourage the best in you. That is beautiful. so powerful yeah those women that find the strength to get up every single day uh, us women <laughs> that find the strength but some of us are you know I, I am grateful to be born in this time you know I think about my great-grandmother 11 children my grandmother six children you know I have two children and I'm <laughs> so now let's hear from our final feature of our featured poet she and I go way back to from being roadies on a poetry show named her story um to doing three one woman shows of her own that she's a social worker as well but an amazing poet amazing performer, her one woman shows, Call Me Crazy, Diary of a Mad Social Worker, and her more recent one, Shenanigans. Ladies and gentlemen, Helena D. Lewis. Good day, good day, good people. <laughs> Let me just make sure I got my phone on silent. All right. All right, I'm going to do two poems. How you doing? I'm going to, um, the first one is going to be about my mother, of course, those of you who know her or know me, you know, I lost her a couple of years ago. What about, oh my goodness, 2010. And you know, when you lose a parent and then your position in your family changes, um, it's a transition. Um, it's a club that so many of us belong to, but none of us really want to be in this club. Okay. My mama. My mama, my mama, my mama, my mama was 27 years old, raising four children, working in the fields, picking beans and tomatoes for $4 a day. My mama, my mama was born and raised in the segregated South. She lived diversity and oppression one-on-one. -on -one. 
My mama didn't always have shoes. She walked to school barefooted. My mama, my mama, my mama, my mama did without so we could have. My mama could pinch a penny until it cried. My mama, my mama, my mama, my mama gave me my first car and paid the insurance on it so I wouldn't have to catch the bus late at night to get home from work. My mama, my mama, my mama made money when she was young, picking lip balls off of blankets for white women. My mama, my my mama, my mama told me her father took the trash out and never came back, left her mother alone with four children to raise. I don't even know his name, that bum. My mama, my mama, my mama didn't finish school, but learned how to read and write, kept a diary in 1959, detailing surviving black, female and poor in the South. My mama, my mama, my mama told me my job was to go to school, so I did. Now they call me Dr. Lewis. D-S-W-L-C-S-W-L-C-A-D-C. Put some respect on my name. My mama, my mama, my mama had a strange complexion. Not black, not white, more Native American than house nigga. My mama, my mama took her last breath in my arms, and I was the one who told her her mother had died and my brother and my other brother my mama my mama my mama taught us don't call her at work with no bad news my mama my mama could not dance but it never stopped her from doing the electric slides my mama my mama my mama my mama was one of those old school moms you better be home before the street fights come on moms who which who you think you talking to moms you better sit up in church moms my mama my mama Mama was 5'10, wore a size 10 shoe, but she walked like she was 10 feet tall. My mama, my mama, my mama taught me right from wrong, was abused by my father until my siblings jumped him, beat him with brooms and mops, and he never touched her again. My mama, my mama moved from Homestead to Newark in the 60s. She didn't want to go, left her two sisters and her mother behind because her husband could not find work. She must have been so scared. My mama, my mama, my mama, my mama was always there for me. My father left my mother. She got on welfare, went back to school, earned her GED and went to nursing school to become an LPN. My mama, my mama, my mama lived long enough to bury three of her children. She told me the worst thing a parent could ever do was I live her child. My mama was funny, feisty, resourceful, had an ointment or a cream for whatever was ailing you. My mama, my mama made the best potato salad. Y'all don't understand. My mama could burn. My mama, my mama took care of my brother when he was diagnosed with AIDS. My mama, my mama would tease me, say things like, I don't know why you so short. And I would reply, how you gonna get mad at me for your DNA? My mama, my mama, my mama kicked my brother out of the house when he was on drugs. My mother, my mother loved us all the same. We didn't always have what we wanted, but we always had what we needed. My mama, my mama told me she was frying fish with me when, when her water broke. She said, the doctor said, I see a foot. And she screamed out, oh, Lord, I'm going to die. She told me the doctor said it was too late to turn me around. So I came my feet first. She said, that's the reason why I'm always stepping into trouble. My mama, my mama, my mama went back to college when I was in in high school, worked full time from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. and still managed to get up every day and make me breakfast for school. Grits, two scrambled eggs, bacon, toast, hot chocolate, even in the summertime, two slices of jelly toast and a glass of tang. My mama, my mama, my mama, my mama will look at us and we will all stop whatever we was doing in fear. My mama was that gangster. My mama, my mama, my mama added an A to her name, named me Helena. I'm the baby of six. And when I grow up, I want to be just like my mama. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This next poem... Well, you know, for those of you who know me, you know, I work with women that are incarcerated, right? I can tell you stories, but I won't go into detail. <laughs> okay. Um, so this poem that I'm going to do is called Engine Off. Um, there was a time when I was like, why does the police just keep pulling me over? Okay. And um, I 
am very inspired by the ladies that I work with. I don't even know how they have survived this long. Um, when you come out the womb and you're living in such horrible conditions that automatically put you on the pathways to incarceration, I'm inspired every day by them. And this poem is dedicated to them and all the women that we have lost due to uh, police brutality. In my rear view mirror, I see flashing lights again. I've been stopped three times in four days and this time I am positive. No lights have been ran and no speed limit has been broken. I want to say they're just doing their jobs, but at the same time, my inner diva has her hand on her hips, rolling her eyes saying, damn, can a sister get a break? Ain't nobody got time for this. That's what I get for not taking the long way. That's what I get for driving through the wrong part of town. That's what I get for inhaling and exhaling while black. I am not worried about my vehicle being searched or told or anything like that. I'm focusing on surviving the encounter. And my work ID has a get out of jail pass attached, but it won't stop racial profiling, the bullets of a nervous cop, or my grave from being dug. Engine off, hands in plain view, I know the drill. Do not raise your voice. Do not make any sudden movements. Do not get out of the car. Do not, do not, do not. I teach it to the women inmates that I work with. They share with me stories of being shackled to hospital beds while giving birth, mandatory hysterectomies, and being raped, impregnated, and abused by prison staff. One of them fought back, decided not to swallow, and spit the evidence of her victimization into a cup as proof of her living nightmare. That landed her a transfer to solitary confinement. The vulnerable, the marginalized, the women with no future with the same past. In the back of my mind, I hear them telling me why, why, why they don't trust the police. And sometimes I want to say, I don't trust them either. And my inner diva, she be trying to make me say it too, but that wouldn't be professional. The cop that pulled me over is still in his car. He is obviously running my plates looking for a reason to escalate and I don't see a dashboard camera. My only witness if this traffic stop goes wrong, my voice if the tape is not mysteriously lost or damaged, he exits and approaches my vehicle. I can tell my inner diva is not happy. And all I can think of, all I can think of is every 40 hours, a black man, woman, or child is killed by the police, a security guard, or some type of law enforcement. My goal during this encounter, like the others, is to live to breathe another day. If the trigger is pulled and a bullet be released into my dome, chances are there would be no marches and no one would remember my name. To showcase my face to those with white privilege would not promote the stereotype of an angry black male to garner sympathy for my killer. So this black girl turned woman, turned victim story would not be on Fox, Channel 9, MSNBC or anywhere else. And my name will be forgotten along with seven-year-old Ayana Jones, 66-year-old Eleanor Bumpers, and 93-year-old Pearlie Golden. Now you tell me, you tell me, when did a 93-year-old and a seven-year-old become a threat to men with gun dressed in blues? I mean, I could see if this was some type of post-zombie apocalyptic world, and they had turned into flesh-eating zombies, and they were rushing towards the police officers that shot and killed them, and they had no other choice but to defend themselves or become zombies, but that was not the case. They were already walking while dead. Ayana was shot in her grandmother's arms after the police kicked in the wrong door. Miss Pearlie, Miss Pearlie had dementia. Justice is not blind. It is also sexist and racist. Engine off, hands in plain view. I know the drill. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not. Thank you all. My name is Talina D. Lewis. I started performing at the New Eureka Cafe in 1998. I was on the 2000 Slam team, and I just want to send my sincerest, heartfelt condolences to the family of um, Miguel Agarine and all of my New Eureka Poets Cafe family. Damn this COVID-19. I wish we can all be together and mourn and grieve and be one. But if you need me, call me. <laughs>
right now. I love you. Beautiful, so powerful. Oh my goodness, brought me to tears. Brought me to tears. And your mama's watching and your mama was ooh, fierce and so proud. So, so proud. I know, I know she is. I wanted to make sure to bring all my features up, you know, because this event, we have 90 minutes to do it. So I wanted to make sure to get all our features in. But our final performer is going to be uh, one of my favorite open mic performers. This woman, they call her Thunder Lung. And she moves me to tears too. And I just had to invite her in to be within this circle of powerful women. I present to you, ladies and gentlemen, Ray Jane. Hi. 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 Um, thank you, Bruja, for inviting me into this space. Um, Rosalind and I were going back and forth, just kind of talking about how it felt like a sacred space. Um, I lost my cousin who is, she was only 30 years old on Sunday. They buried her today in Ohio. And my heart is breaking because I can't be there for my family in the middle of this pandemic. So I wrote a poem for her because that's what we do as poets and writers. We try to transform that pain and wisdom and things that we learn um, into things that will last forever. So I wrote a poem for her. Her name is Shemekha and I'm offering her up for immortality in this space. Aunt Tiny called you dearest, a little younger than us big cousins, but older than the smaller ones. You were right in the middle, right where you belong, close to all of us. You would follow me around when we were small people. Even way back then you were delightful and charming, wanting to sing like your big cousin, but I could never hold a candle to you. Mecca, my love, you were always special, bursting with talent and tenacity, no diagnosis or rule could hold you. I didn't really understand lupus, but I knew it was too small of a word to ever describe you. I had no idea how it ravaged your small body, repeatedly adding to your family a sea, a bevy of clinical people. You tapped east and west in search of whatever combination was best to ease you. So brave and beautiful, I wonder if you knew how much I admired you how you pushed, how you refused to be confined, how you spoke your mind like so many people left holding regret. I wish I had more time with you. I wish I called you more. I wish I were a better big cousin. I find some solace though, but only cause I know you up there making trouble with Bo. Damn, I can't believe we lost you both, but new stars in the sky, y'all will continue to glow. Bo will keep you close and Aunt Tiny will show you the ropes. The rest of us will have to make do. Our marvelous flower forever blossoming though, no longer in our field of view. Shemekha, we will walk with courage for you. We will remove Excuses not to live bold and free. We will remember how it used to be, how your laugh sounded, how you hugged like you knew you gave the best hugs. You must have learned that from Aunt Tut. I remember I will embrace longer because of you. I promise to sprinkle some Mecca in everything I do. In that way, I will always be reminded of your grace. I'll close my eyes and smile, thinking of your face, those big old cheeks rising and readily giving and giving, even when your body was unsteady. It was never big enough for you anyway, love. 
And now you are an ancestor to further, no further bound or sequestered by the fleeting favor of flesh, no more separated by state lines. Yes, I get to love you with unending access, love you in excess with your spirit surrounding us. We know we remain blessed, weeping too for the loss of you, but proud to be a witness to the God already living in you. Thank you for showing us what it meant to be fearless. You could care less what anybody thought. You fought and never lost. You just transferred, hallelujah, you've emerged. Wait, it, it, it muted, it muted, wait. Yep, go back like. Oh, it muted again. Go back like two lines. I don't know why. Why is it doing that? Try again. Unmute. Ray Jane. Yeah, Ray Jane. There you go. Y'all can hear me? Now. Yeah, now. We heard you. It, I stopped it just when you when it muted for some reason. So maybe go back like two lines. I'm sorry for that. What's the last thing you heard? Oh, Dios mío. That's, that's tough to add. Uh, uh, I'm just going to start from hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah, you've emerged. Encouraged by you, but still I still cry for you till I'm tearless. I thank you for being more than any of us deserve. For showing us how to have attitude, we give you our gratitude. We owe you nothing less. Above all else, we thank you for letting yourself be forever our dearest. Thank you. Yes, Ray Jane. My condolences. And now Shemekha lives forever through you and these words and this poem in this amazing archive. Um, thank you for sharing and thank you for joining us. Absolutely. So, so thank you for letting me share your space. Of course, put your information in the chat as well so that we can all stay connected. It is so tough during this pandemic to not actually be together and to mourn our to mourn our people, you know, but at least we have this this moment in time together and um and for as heartbreaking as it is, it's also heartwarming to to hear all of you and and to just have this opportunity to immortalize them forever in these archives. So again, I wanna say, go to www.womensactivism.nyc slash share to capture and, uh, and preserve your words um, about beautiful, powerful women, our heroes in our lives. Um, I don't know how many of you speak Spanish. Maybe by a show of hands, let me know. Does anybody speak Spanish in this room? Because I have a, a Spanish po poem dedicated to my mommy in Spanish. Because my mother always wanted to be a dancer and they were too poor to ever afford dance. So my mother put me in dance at the age of four. <laughs> she put me in everything <laughs> that she wanted to do and be in. And, um, and now she teaches salsa on Zoom at the age of 74. If she hears me say her age, she would kick me. But, <laughs> but my mother, this poem is dedicated to mi madre, my mother. Mi madre desde pequeña tenía la cara de una reina con su corona de pelo oro y sabiduría en sus ojos, con capacidad de mente fuerte e inteligencia transparente, chiquita, finita, con ropas que no le cabían y una boquita color rosita que guardaba todo lo que sabía. Esperaba ser una bailarina. Sus sueños de rosas tenía espinas. Los bailes antiguos la tocaron con tanto brillo, bailando con su tío. Ella era una estrella con sus movimientos de campesina en su tarima de marquesina. Y fuertecita se quedó cuando a América llegó con su hermanito y madre encinta porque su padre se murió. 
en Puerto Rico lo dejó y fuertecita se quedó y nadie la cargó. No lloró, no cargó, no cayó. Derechita se marchó hasta la cara de Nueva York. Mi madre, bella flor, mi madre, puro amor. La vi crecer como madre y mujer y no lo creo cuando veo su sagrado poder. Ay, buena madre, tanto diste y tanto das. Tú eres mi mundo entero, mi estrella y tanto más. Te adoro. Thank you, my mother. Nilsa de la Luz. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions that they want to put in the chat that they would like addressed, if anybody would just like to say a little something before we close out, we have a good 10 minutes to do so. Um, this has been an amazing event. I am just moved with emotion and so grateful to have been able to share this space with our amazing features and our amazing open micers for these organizations that are doing so much. Um, let's see, any questions there? I see Carolyn was write, writing about her mommy. Madre, Madre de Agua, Gares Yemaya. Yes, blessings, blessings, blessings. Uh, I know Leona is a poet in the 80s at the New York and Poets Cafe was in the slam team. Leona, would you like to just say a word, if not a poem? You were on the open mic list, so I would like to, you know, hold space for you if you want to say anything. No? Yeah. Oh, let's unmute. Okay. Oh, hi, everyone. Um, you know, I didn't realize I signed up for the list. I thought it, I thought it just meant that I wanted to be at the open mic on the but I'm kind of a Luddite, you know, so uh, you'll have to excuse me. But um, yeah, I'll just say this. I am so inspired by the power of every single woman I have been blessed to hear tonight. I am going to pick up this pen and start again. Oh, hoo -hoo, that is so far. Thank you. Hey, you guys, you guys are really, whoa, man. I don't know what the, maybe, I don't know. Did, are there more, is the, did the vocabulary get bigger or something? Or where have I been? I don't know. <laughs> I'll be back though. Well, it's because our ovaries got bigger. That's what it is. Our ovaries don't got big in this patriarchal society. <laughs> We're not having it. We're not taking it anymore. It's so amazing. So, so amazing. And our men, you know, the way we need our, uh, you know, white people to hold space for people of color, we need our men to hold space for our women. So we can all just be able to find ourselves connected at peace with love, compassion, equality. Um, that's what I hope to see. That's what, you know, what I love about poetry and these open mics is that with these poems, we create the narrative for the world to live into. And that's the power of our words. So start choosing your words wisely. And Leona, thank you for picking up that pen. And for all of you out there that have a poetic spirit inside of you, don't sleep on your own magic. Please don't sleep on your own magic because we need all of your voices to be raised, you know, in shining light on, on a, the healthy way of being, you know, a sane way of being, because it's been pretty insane. Um, so I would like to invite Spirit back up. Anyone from the organization that would like to say anything in our last oh, minute? Thank you so much. I mean, in the spirit of women who move us, my goodness, I... I know I speak for the whole entire women's activism team just moved beyond words. Um, I also want to recognize that our commissioner, Pauline Toole, was in the house tonight to support and be among us in community. So that was wonderful to see her here. Um, wow. <laughs> this is exactly 
Pardon me? Were you moved to tears too? Because I- Absolutely. I mean, this is like the quintessential embodiment of our vision for women's activism in NYC. Like to be in a community and to share with one another and like lift one and up one another up with our words and our experiences and just the vulnerability and truth and just the it's absolutely stunning and we can't thank you enough la bruja for helping to weave this tapestry and your remarkable words yourself it's just you're amazing and everyone who presented tonight is amazing and we're just very very grateful i live for this <laughs> Live for it. So with that energy, we would highly encourage you to contribute to the Women's Activism NYC archive. Um, picking up the pen, writing, it can be poetry. Um, you can add a video to the archive as well to honor women in this way. And one of the key unsung heroes a lot of times is ourselves. And I think that it's important when, and we really wanna encourage you to tell your story and to help expand the narrative and, and our, the narrative of the archive, but our, our national and global narrative as well. Um, as was mentioned in many of the pieces, we're living in every day is history. We're making history every day we wake up, every time we open our mouth. So this is a very sacred space that we have collectively created and I just, Thank you very, very much Thank you, for this beautiful evening. Thank you. I want to acknowledge Latanya. I want to acknowledge Madeline. Uh, I want to acknowledge Raul. I want to acknowledge Chris, who's working the board for us at the New York and Poets Cafe. Um, join us at the New York and Poets Cafe. We, I do the open mics on Thursday night, and my friend Advocate of Words hosts on Monday nights. I want to acknowledge, again, our featured poets, Mariposa, my dear friend of all these years, I mean, man, since the beginning, over 20 years, I want to acknowledge Susan Baraka, who blew my mind away with the Korean culture and, you know, oh my gosh, that poem will stay with me forever. Tahani, you Palestinian goddess, queen, warrior woman, thank you and for raising your little girl there while you recite so powerful. I'm so, so grateful to have heard you tonight. Helena D. Lewis, Dr. Helena, don't even get it twisted. Your mother, oh, I, I feel her spirit through you and you're just, you're a goddess queen and all that, the work that you do as a social worker for all those women, those unsung heroes and, and those women that are being victimized. And thank you so much for the work that you do. Thank you, thank you to my open micers, Rosalind Diaz, um, Elise Versella, and Ray Jane, and thank you, Leona Gonzalez, for, for picking up that pen. We made magic tonight. If anybody wants to say anything else, oh, um, New Yorican Poets Cafe is reminding me to donate if you can go to the New Yorican Poets Cafe uh, org slash contribute and follow me, man. Follow me on Instagram, La Bruja NYC for you non Latinos. It's La Bruja NYC <laughs> or my name, CaridadeLaLuz.com. You know, follow me and uh, and join us. Join this community of open mics and 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 just stay vocal. Even though we are having to stay apart from each other, we could still stand together. And that's what we did tonight in honor of all those powerful women. Yes, yes, yes. How beautiful is that? Does anybody, you know, want to raise their hand and say a little something? I see Bonnie in the room. I see Pauline, you know. I see you, I see you. If there's anything anybody wants to say, if you've been moved, please write it, write it down in the chat or, you know, unmute or something because this is your voice. This is your strength. Helena, were you gonna add something? I see you unmuted. Oh, you know, no, I would wanna go, I wanna go, yeah! <laughs> I would like to comment or something like we're really are living in like some crazy times here and with this 
COVID-19 to, and I'm talking to the people in the future, in the future, a hundred years from now, when you see this, okay, know this. I, no one that I know ever thought this would happen and grief comes in waves. You know, uh, today you might be feeling okay. Tomorrow you not might not be feeling okay, but it's okay to have continual relationships with people that have trans transitioned on um that's called continuing bonds theory i talk to my moms often i'd be like i can't believe you left me here with these crazy people in this house you know and um if you feel in some kind of way like you can't make it or something do not hesitate to reach out to somebody you are not alone you are not alone yes yes right and speaking to people 100 years from now isn't that amazing because mm, today this this now is COVID-19 100 years from now it might be COVID-2001 we don't know <laughs> you know what I'm saying all I want to know wear your freaking mask like what's so put the mask on <laughs> I gotta be running around dodging people I went to the wash house I call it the laundry mat and people up in there I'm like hello six feet social distancing you're breathing on my laundry I don't know where your breath been you know <laughs> don't get me started <laughs> Well, thank you. A hundred years from now, you you listening? You listening? Yeah, wear a mask. Hundred years from now. <laughs> so, uh, Pauline, thank you, Helen. Mm -hmm. Helena, that was beautiful. I just want to thank you, Caridad, and everybody, and and I hope you do this again. Celebrate, continue to celebrate women. Um, and I want to give a shout out to. I see some of my students are here. <laughs> So shout out to my students and um, hello, this is a platform. So La Bruja has an open mic. You could come in. Um, you'll get extra credit. <laughs> I'll give you extra credit. When is your next open yeah, mic? Yeah, they're shouting out. They's like, thank you, Professor Mariposa. <laughs> Woo, put some on that name. Professor Mariposa, I'm so glad you mentioned that because we're actually currently hosting a story contest called Women Who Inspire Story Contest. And we are really trying to have students contribute stories because there is up to $500 that can be won from contributing stories. So beautiful. Thank you. I'll share it's that with them. Fabulous. Look at that. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll leave that in the chat, a link. Let, let's hear from Pauline Poole for a moment. Pauline, would you like to share some words? I'm just going to say this once. Thank you all for being here, thank the Orican for understanding the value of the Women's Activism Project. We've been working for the last seven years to bring voices that are more diverse into New York City government's archives by connecting women through women's activism, the stories of regular people in neighborhoods so we can connect those real stories to government records, which is what the New York City Municipal Archives is but they're not anything unless the voices of people are there. So your work tonight uh, will be part of this permanent archive and it will allow people to understand the dynamism that is the community of women poets in New York City. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is 9.30 and this session has come to a close. It has been magical and powerful. The ancestors are with us. And now, a hundred years from now, we are your ancestors and we love you. Beautiful. Thank you.